Well, hello and welcome back. Or if you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Colin and I am the proud owner of a 2024 Winnebago Micro Mini FLX. And welcome to another deep dive episode. So in the deep dive series, we are breaking down the Winnebago Micro Mini FLX products into its different constituent components to help either prospective customers learn about the product through the lens of someone who's used it for the last year or existing customers to maybe uh, consider and dial in or learn more about the systems. So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at the interior and exterior storage. And I know myself as a prospective customer, when I was shopping, I was shopping through the lens of a mountain biker. In fact, I made a series called The Mountain Biker's Perspective. So I was looking at the trailer through the way that it had itself configured vis-a-vis -vis its storage and features and benefits such that I could use it not only as a ends within itself to go camping, but a means to an end to go do mountain biking or whatever other sport you might be interested in. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, the footage you're about to see actually was recorded in an episode that's going to be coming out later titled Ultimate Year in Review, where I go through the entire trailer and all of its components. And the footage was actually part of that episode, but in the interest of making that episode not an hour long, and also to help other prospective buyers who may just be searching for the Winnebago Micro Mini FLX and may already know about the Deep Dive series, I've decided to pull that footage out and it's gonna be its own standalone video, which is what you're gonna see now. So when I'm referencing criteria, just please understand that that is where that is from. So I'll pass you over now to past Colin when I was filming that, and then we'll meet here at the end to conclude. All right, cool. See you then. All right, next up is interior storage. And five out of five, it is absolutely incredible in this trailer. And a particular shout out to 714 Racer and his wife down in California, who are also mountain bikers and considering this product. This tour bit is for you guys. So on each side of the bed, we have the standard wardrobes. The way that I have personally used them is for like my good clothes, you know, things that, you know, I might want to wear into town or into the city, etc. Up top, I've been keeping loungewear and unmentionables and that sort of thing. I really don't mind that it's an open shelf configuration up here because it keeps things looking sort of light and bright and, and less like, you know, the, the visual weight of like cupboards are above you. So that is for standard clothes. Now, the piece de resistance, or one of them I should say, is this cabinet under here. Now, keep in mind, I have upgraded this trailer to have a full 60 by 80 queen, which included or necessitated this slightly longer piece of wood. So you will actually see the overhang for my trailer for the bed relative to this storage compartment is actually bigger. That said, I think Winnebago should be doing this from factory. So while we don't necessarily need another six inches here per se, I wouldn't say no to an extra three inches. But come on in, I'll show you kind of what I have down here. All right, so this is kind of an example of how I have been utilizing the space. I have my Thule round trip bike duffel. So this is like majority of my riding clothes and bags. I have my open face helmet, knee pads, that sort of thing. This is like my grab and go bag. So it's in here at the moment. I have room for some filming equipment, which comes in here as well. Spare tire, some booties, because again, the underbelly is not heated, so the floor does inherently get quite chilly, especially in the morning. I have always a box of gray wolf hats and, uh, and dog leashes, so if you ever see me out in person and you're looking for a way to support the channel and get some really good quality product at the same time, be sure to hit me up. And then I have a full face helmet in its protective case there. And you may also notice that this Thule round trip bike duffel you could probably fit two on top of each other, but what I think would be really cool is if Winnebago did like a half drawer that maybe sort of like slid back and forth so that, you know, that way you can utilize some of the vertical space that I'm, you know, poorly uh, using here. So I have kept lots of different things, but there's more than enough room down here for multiple bags. So for you and your wife, if you each have your own sort of like riding grab and go kit or multiple full face helmets or whatever that looks like 
spare, you know, tires, etc. Um, hiking boots that you just don't want floating around. Yeah, this is a, a really, really good space, but, uh, but there's more uh, when it comes to mountain biking and using this trailer as a, as a, uh, as an end, uh, a means to an end, sorry, versus just an ends within itself. So let's, let's keep, keep the tour going. All right, next up we have the dinette storage space down here, and I am using it really inefficiently right now. So this one, I've just sort of got some uh, extra sheets, uh, a blanket that I use outside, and a inflatable pillow, and this is kind of more of like my housewares style, you know, cupboard space here. This one I've just been using for like tools and accessories and miscellaneous stuff for future, you know, projects and modifications, etc. But, uh, but yeah, I'm using this storage space really inefficiently. There are, as you can see, cabinet doors here at the end. But of course, if you lift up the seat, you can always remove the panel and gain access. So if something's way back in the corner, that's how you would do that. For context of size, I have had like a toolkit and an entire mountain bike and road bike minus the frame in this cupboard. That's how I, uh, I, I drove out and then I built that up out west. So yeah, you can fit a lot of parts and, and pieces in these, these uh, dinette cupboards. Kitchen uppers, again, very poorly used by myself. I'd love to come up with some kind of uh, internal divider system where maybe I could take like my cups and bowls and things and stack that in here, but I'm not exactly sure. So if you have any ideas or you're like a professional closet organizer or enthusiast designer, please let me know. I'm, I'm sincerely open to, to suggestions how this could be much more efficiently utilized. The way that I envision this space being used is for plates, bowls, cups, mugs, etc. It's just, I'm not using it that way right now because it just needs, really needs internal organization. Down below, this is not a very good usable cabinet. In fact, you can already see kind of one of the issues, which is if I open this, here are my blue scrunchy towels, which are actually supposed to be up here. The reason is that, well, one, if you open it all the way, it's actually inverted, so everything slides out. And then when you close it up, you can see that this large cutaway at the back allows items to bounce out during transit. So that's not super useful. The uh, the two drawers, this is kind of ended up being that proverbial kitchen junk drawer. Again, I really need some internal organization, but I've been keeping like, you know, cutlery and scissors and that sort of thing up here. And this is where I've been keeping my cups and kettle and those sorts of uh, French press that really, I, I, you know, could be and should be better kept up here. The main cabinet here is good. You can fit a decent sized garbage and you have room for lots of like cleaning solutions and stuff. It is somewhat problematic because of the way that they have routed this. There's a much better way that they could have done it instead of having it come forward because you are inherently limiting, you know, the, the depth of uh, and width of garbage cans that you can fit in here. So again, in that future video where I'm discussing how in, you know, Winnebago should consider you know, building this slightly differently. This is one of those things I'll, I'll get into more detail there, but generally speaking, decent cupboard. Now the pot drawer, this is awesome. I've been prone to keeping the glass from the microwave in here and I have the like uh, blender base and the food processor base I can put in here along with some bowls, etc. This is really, really nice. Very few trailers have this, most especially very few trailers in this size class have this. So yeah, super cool. I love this. Up top, the one cupboard that they do give us has been nice for chips and sweets and that sort of thing. And then there is another cupboard down below. This is what I've been using as my pantry. There are two full depth shelves and then like a little mini kind of shelf down here. This one I do have a, a bit of a problem with as well. And the simple reason is that if your items are back here, you're reaching in blind to get them. It's made all the more awkward on this lower one. So yeah, there's a better solution to that, but uh, this, is, uh, this is what we have. So it's a good pantry. There's lots of food that you can store in here for two people. You could easily, like easily figure out like a month's worth of, 
of food in here. But uh, yeah. Coming into the bathroom, we can see that there is this under sink storage here, which I need to actually come in and secure the, uh, the protective thing down. You will see that there is no hanger for the toilet bathroom tissue, but, uh, but there's plenty of space. I think I've got a whole like 12 pack in the back here. So lots of space for your, your, uh, uh, black and gray tank tablets and toilet cleaners and that sort of, sort of thing. Huge space there. Pay no attention to this. I just had this off for uh, winterization purposes. Likewise, down here, we have a secondary cupboard and this is where I have put a makeshift what do you call this? A laundry bag. And I also keep like the shower mat and that sort of thing um, down here. So this is nice. So when your clothes are dirty and smelly, etc., it is all kind of like sealed in this, this cupboard. So this is again, you know, from like a laundry management perspective, typically you only see those like integrated laundry solutions on really big trailers where they have the space and the, the or the luxury of space, I should say, to integrate those. For us, we have that here. That said, there is a lot of wasted space behind this particular panel that uh, maybe could and should be revisited in the future. So, yeah. This, though, this is the, bit, the main one. This is the piece de resistance. But before we get to that, <laughs> we have the medicine cabinet. Lots of space up in here. Uh, again, everything is sort of jiggled about. But, uh, yeah, good for two people, kind of a his and hers, etc. Now onto it though. I've talked about it before and I'll talk about it again. This cabinet, this cupboard is awesome for anybody doing any kind of like sports and recreation because you can take your mountain bike clothes as I have here or your around the campsite clothes that might smell like campfire. If you're into diving, you could even you know, uh, dry your wetsuit off in the shower and then hang that up in here because it's bulky and the like, neoprene smell might transfer onto other clothes, etc. But yeah, for mountain biking, you can go out, you can get super sweaty in something. And if you think that you are going to or need to wear it again another day, put it in this cupboard away from all of your nice clothes in the wardrobe, having that separation of, uh, separation of church and state, as they say, this is... There are very, 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 very few trailers that offer this kind of a solution, especially, you know, far enough away from where you would keep your normal good clothes. So, yeah, uh, Mr. Seven, Mr. And Mrs. 714, this is, uh, yeah, this is for you. Okay, moving on the list. The next is exterior storage, which I would personally classify as fair. I wouldn't call it good. I wouldn't call it bad. I would just call it fair. The reason why I say fair is because there is the divider panel in here, which houses your inverter and lithionics battery or batteries. And it does inherently eat into this storage, but arguably speaking, this is where you want the batteries. Maybe not the inverter and other accessories. You know, again, I'll talk about that in another video, but yeah, this is fair. You can still get quite a lot in here. The baggage store compartment is smallish. So myself, you know, I would love to be able to put like my portable fireplace in here. Instead, I can't. But yeah, you can get the majority of what you need in here. And then the rest can always go in your tow vehicle. That's about it. All right, moving on. <laughs> So there you have it. That is a full tour of the storage as it is on the Micro Mini 2108 FBS FLX. With the only exception to the, if we want to call it storage, the hollow bumper whereby you can either store a corrugated black tank hose or what I have stored in mind, which is several sections of a master pump system. I do keep referencing that and I am going to be making a video on that in the future as its own dedicated standalone video. The reason it hasn't come out yet is it's not in its final iteration. So I want to be able to present that in the best possible scenario and not have to go back and kind of reference it, et cetera, et cetera. But that is the only other you know, piece of storage on the trailer. So 
Thank you very much for watching. I always do sincerely appreciate it. If you are interested in the Winnebago Micro Mini FLX products, again, I encourage you to go check out the other episodes in the Deep Dive series. There are more coming out, all sort of at different times and places, etc. A lot of that just has to do with uh, the other videos that I have going on. But suffice it to say, there are still more coming even into the new year. But uh, for now, that is it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Sincerely do appreciate it. You take care and bye for now.